first of a new two-part feature-length adventure featuring C.S. Forrester's maritime hero, yes, Hornblower. We must intervene. The captain is master of the ship. And he sought your opinion, sir, which I note contained nothing to dissuade him from this beating upon which he has now embarked. Mr. Hornblower, may I suggest you take the time to remind Mr. Kennedy that he is merely fourth lieutenant aboard this ship. He has the captain's ear. Why did he not speak when he had the chance? Say what? The captain's blood was up. For Mr. Bush to have spoken up for Mr. Weller would only have provoked him further. You think I should have held my tongue? You think I made it worse? You acted for the best. Oh. Well, there's precious salt for my conscience. On deck there! Sail ho! There we go. And Lieutenant Archie Kennedy, Jamie Barber joins us now. A promotion, congratulations, a sir. A promotion, yes, another series of promotions. So we go through the territory, it's in the contract. <laughs> and there's, there's not much of it in the book, though, isn't it? That was a slight problem for you. No, no, the character really doesn't exist. I mean, it's mentioned in one of the early books. Um, and when I started, it was just uh, a small character, but, and it was meant to be killed off after the first episode. But there's a sort of void in the novels, which is uh, he doesn't really have a friend, a buddy, a soulmate, you know, someone to sort of spill the beans with and mm. just talk about things and you kind of need that for a TV drama so he just filled that role before um, Paul McGann's character comes in um, Lieutenant Bush right. who is plays that role in the novels and is there as, as a written character in Forrester's original so it's nothing to do with your supreme acting capabilities like the, you wow them over and that we've got to keep this guy oh, I don't know about that <laughs> you can say that if you like exactly no, the, the writer did a great job and he was a lovely character and he had all sorts of you know problems of his own and um, it just seem to make sense to keep yeah. them on, I think. So did you know from the outset that the character was going to... No, not really. I, I started off just making the first film back in 1997, but then as, pretty well as soon as I started shooting, the producer, Andrew Benson, came to me and said, listen, we're thinking of, you know, keeping this character in as a, as a regular, and he's really an amalgamation of three or four characters in the books. Um, but, yeah, because Yowen uh, was saying this was all shot, like, two years ago. We shot these last two, two just two years ago, yeah, in, in summer of 2000. But we started in 1997 doing the first four films before that. So, yeah, it's been a while. It feels like a long time ago. I'm trying to refresh my memory. What's going on? <laughs> and so are you hopefully going to do the next series? Are you, are you uh, no, I won't be. Well, you know, I won't be for reasons that you'll find out. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh ho, ho, ho. Now, um, we, we did hold him down and torture him to tell us, but he was telling us um, a story about you having your clothes stolen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a long time ago. You didn't think you would come in and not give us any dirt on I that. was a reckless young actor in those days. That's not fair. Do tell us what, what oh, happened. Uh, I think we were filming in Portugal um, in a place called Sacimbra, a sleepy little fishing village, until we got there. <laughs> and uh, no, it's just a few, you know, sangrias, a few uh, nice salt-baked fish. As you do. Uh, as you do in the evening. And I yeah. uh, fancied a dip afterwards. Went swimming and my clothes weren't there when I got back. <laughs> so I had to drive back in the boot of the taxi, I think, if I remember rightly, because the taxi driver wouldn't have me in the car. Right. They've actually got some photographs here, Jamie, of oh, the shut up. <laughs> <laughs> say. But okay, you're not going to be doing Hornblower, but um, you are, you've got a very big year coming up. Well, you've, you've been busy. You've been doing something with Ross Kemp, haven't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm working now, at the moment. This sounds great. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah, it's something about the SAS, which doesn't seem to be everywhere at the moment. Um, you can't really talk about it. Yeah. No, I have to kill you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a six-part ITV drama all about the SAS, um, about, you know, they're all based in Hereford, the 2-2 regiment, and it's about that whole, you know, the day in, day out, what it's like to be in the SAS. So did you actually have to sort of train up to do that? Not really. And we, we, did, we did weapons training, um, yeah. fired a few live rounds in a, in a rifle range, and, and trained on how to do what they call um, the killing house, which is sort of clearing... Um, oh, I've done that. Yeah, have you done that? Sure, it's scary. You have to, and they suddenly yeah, say, you sort of follow you shot one of your own. Exactly. It's hostage <laughs> like, situation, going into a hostage sort yeah. of a house or a room or whatever, like the Iranian That's embassy. Amazing. Speech. And someone just pops up, and you don't know really you know, know whether, you're to know whether it's whether the enemy or one of your friends, yeah. you know. And clearly, I got it horribly wrong. Mm. Yeah, and I, I'm sure I would too. <laughs> right. So that, you finished that? That's all no, we're still doing still it. Still doing yeah, it. Yeah, another two weeks on that, um, right. but it should come out in the autumn, I think. So sailor, uh, doctor, peak practice obviously, and yeah. soldier. You know, what, yeah. what's your favourite here? Do you like the costume or do you like the gritty reality stuff? I, I love both. It's great right. to change between one and the other. Um, when I was doing Hornblower, I yearned to get in sort of modern dress and mm. to, to do something, you know, a bit more real to, yeah. to us in our lives today. But then having done peak practice and then, and then this uh, ultimate force, 
um, you know, I, I can't wait to get back in a posh frock, you know. <laughs> what do you, what did the public sort of respond to you most as? Which role? Hornblower, definitely, yeah. um, over the I mean, and peak practice too recently, but that's so recent. Hornblower, especially because there's cause such a huge following in America. Yeah, it's brilliantly I just there, get tons it? of letters and tons of interest from over there, so that, I think, is, is the one that people... Left this mark on the British public. Yeah, because well. Yeoman was saying he, he might... Well, he, planning to go over to LA, wasn't he? Is that something mm. that you might Well, actually, I, I, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time over there. I'm half American. My dad's American. And so, um, yeah, I, mean, I was there for four months last year. I was meant to be doing a movie, but that went, went belly up, went okay. south. But um, I, sh I bumped into Yoan in LA just a few weeks ago. I was over there just for a week. And as you do. As you I do. don't want to go into this conversation <laughs> too voluntarily. We bump into each other on Chingford yeah. High Street, don't we? It's not quite the same. <laughs> well, good luck. It's obviously watched this space, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Well, you must come in and, and talk to us about Ultimate Force. I love it. That's on, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you finish. Yeah. Okay, look after yourself. Don't get shot. Uh, not yet. Uh, All right. We we'll wait and see. Mm, we'll be watching it. Intriguing. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. All the best, Jane. Nice to meet you, Jamie. Nice to meet you. Uh,